How's it going everyone? Taki here. Today we're going to go over some of the basics to getting started with PVM in RuneScape 3. To get notified of all new videos when they drop and to help support the channel, smash that sub button and click the bell icon. On screen you can find an overview of this video. As always, timestamps are located in the description box below. Feel free to skip around to the sections that interest you. Let's get started. Before we delve into other sections, I want to do a little bit of a sales pitch for RS3 PVM and why you should consider trying it out. PVM and RS3 is a fairly divisive issue for many in the community, but I think it gets a bad rap. There is definitely a point before you get into bossing that combat can seem kind of cumbersome and pointless. But once you get into encounters that rely on accurate use of rotations and abilities, you will see where combat really shines. The primary reason to get started with PVM is its earning potential. High-end PVM is unmatched in profit per hour versus anything in RuneScape with the exception of top-end merching. The majority of higher tier bosses drop loot that can seriously alter what you are able to do and accomplish in the game. Most of these bosses are also group friendly and allow you to build social communities in a way that is lacking for most skills in the game. There is also the aspect of improving your use of combat abilities to benchmark yourself against the larger community. On that note, let's talk a little bit about PVM communities. There are many PVM communities for pretty much anything you can imagine in the game. The primary benefit to joining a community is to have people that you can boss with and learn from. There are many friends chats that you can use for PVM. Two of the ones that I've used for PVM are PVMing FC and Raid FC. Many of the old popular FCs have now transferred over to Discord. If you're interested in organizing bossing groups, you can take a look at my Discord server. I will walk you through how to get set up for bossing using my Discord server. When you join the server, you will see that there's a PVM channel on the left side of your screen. Click PVM signups, and then click on any of the icons for the bosses that you are interested in being notified about. After that, it's as simple as joining the group forming channel and constructing your message with the correct boss ping. Next up, let's walk through some interface customizations. Interface customization is an important part of PVM because it allows you to have access to all the various interfaces that you need while you are bossing. For this example, I'm going to start off with the default RS3 layout and walk you through customizing it for PVM. The first thing that I like to do is to move the ribbon to the top left hand corner of my screen. I keep my map where it is and I put my magic abilities underneath the map. Then I like to put my prayer inside that same exact window so I can switch between those whenever I need. From here I put my equipment window in the bottom right hand corner and attach the skills interface and any other interfaces that I have open as other tabs. From here you gotta change your backpack settings, press escape, go to settings, and then open up interface. And we're gonna be changing the dynamic backpack columns to seven columns. Once you're done customizing your backpack, you can resize your chat window, and then we're going to move on to our familiar options. Go ahead and open up your familiar options window, resize it, put it to the right side of your screen. This will leave a good gap for you to have other ability bars in between your main ability bar and your backpack. Next, press escape and go into your gameplay settings and then go into action bar settings. You're gonna want to enable your second and third action bars on the left side of your screen. This part is personal preference, but I like to have these action bars as vertical bars, and I like to put them to the right side of my primary action bar. When you're good with this, you can leave it as it is, or you can resize your backpack to allow room for one other interface. I personally like to put my constitution and defensive abilities inside this space. The final thing to do is to edit your layout, select gameplay HUDs, and then you're going to want to rearrange your buff and your debuff bar. I like to have my buff bar on the left side of my action bar and my debuff bar on the right side of my action bar. This is a quick look at what it looks like in practice. Another important part of PVM are keybinds. The default keybinds for the game leave a lot to be desired, and you can gain a lot more versatility out of your play by customizing your keys to suit your needs. This is all very subjective but I will walk you through how I set up my keybinds and the thought process behind some of the choices that I've made. When we look at the standard keyboard layout, we see that it extends from number one all the way across the keyboard. Unless you've got crazy hand dexterity, this isn't going to be very useful for you later on. 
So the earlier that you can customize your keys and commit them to memory, the better. I like to customize my first ability bar within the left side of my keyboard, working from the bottom to the top. With this layout, I like to keep my hand rested on A through F and transition up or down depending on what I need to do. You can see that this makes the entire bar within reach without much hand movement. I further customize this with my second bar that houses all of my defensive abilities. Freedom, Anticipation, Resonance, Preparation, Reflect, and Revenge populate keys 3 through 8, and I fill out more slots to the right of my first ability bar with some on-demand abilities like Devotion, Debilitate, and Escape. After this, you can customize a few other abilities so that they are within the same theme as other abilities that are already on your bar. For example, my Shield Switch into a res requires me to press Shift 5 and then 5 again. This can be done within the same game tick. I also have Barricade under the same key with an Alt modifier. Everything else can be done down to personal preference, but this will allow you to build up muscle memory and improve your reaction time to things that happen on screen instantaneously. Now, let's talk about some abilities and buffs. Tuska's Wrath, Devotion, and Sacrifice are all abilities that you're going to want to unlock as early as possible. Each of these abilities can be unlocked very easily by completing the Anima Islands D&D on the back of Tuska for reward currency. You can also choose to obtain Devotion and Sacrifice by killing Bandos and Armadil Generals and followers, but it might be worth it for you to get them solely from Anima Islands if you're a lower level. Devotion is an extremely useful all-around ability because it allows your protection prayers to be 100% effective. While Tuska's Wrath is a fairly good damage boost on and off Slayer assignments, and Sacrifice will bring in some much needed healing. After you get these abilities unlocked, you're going to want to pursue Corruption Shot and Blast from participating in raids or buying an ability codex. These two magic and range abilities will give you a very nice boost to your DPS while also increasing your combat and Slayer XP per hour in mob areas. Aside from this are the Onslaught and Storm Shard abilities but these only really shine on higher end bosses, so you can forego them now if you are just getting started. The next concept worth covering is the Walking of Bleeds. For Slaughter, Fragmentation Shot, and Combust, you can move a boss or monster one square to increase the damage of these abilities drastically. This can be done very easily. For example, on the King Black Dragon, after I land a Combust, I can click underneath him to walk him backwards, and then the 378 hit will turn into a 756 dot. Another ability that you're going to want to get comfortable with using is Resonance right before there is some predictable damage to increase your longevity at a boss. If you're using the aforementioned keybinds, you should be able to do this switch and ability within the same game tick as shown on screen. And finally, the last thing that I want to cover in this section is to remember to always get a bonfire boost before you start bossing. HP boosts are dependent on your fire making level and the boost time is dependent on the logs that you burn. Doing this is very easy as you will only require 5 of a log to burn and you will get the buff on your bar. Now let's talk a little bit about PVM supplies. First up, we have food. And I want to say that there are many more options than the ones that I've listed on screen for you that you can use for PVM, but these are some of the most common ones. When you're just getting started, or you have a lower constitution level, sharks and monkfish will suffice. But there are many times when you'll want some added utility that you can get from other supplies. A few things worth mentioning about these options. First, Kfish has the ability to give you a random combat boost of 2 points while also healing a decent amount. Rocktails heal more than both of these options, but they allow you to boost your HP plus 10%. Jellyfish heals a decent amount in 3 bites, and it doesn't lower your adrenaline when you eat it. You can combo eat this with other food in the same game tick. Sailfish gives the exact same benefits as Rocktail, but heals 100 more. And finally, Ceridomen Brews and Flasks heal 1k each sip and can be comboed with other food. Comboing food is very easy, especially if you have the items keybound. This will allow you to recover from high damage very fast. Simply eat your fish food first and then end on a brew or a jelly to have the action done in one game tick. There are a lot of different potion supplies that you can use. Generally speaking, you'll want to work on boosting your herb level because it will allow you to unlock really significant DPS gains. There are a bunch of types of overloads that you can use that combine different potion effects in one. If you only have the level for it, 
obviously use standard overloads on bosses that require extra stat boosts. Holy overloads are a nice potion to use because they give you two extra doses of overload for cheap and give you the benefit of prayer renewals. The two types of Supremes are really only needed for top end PVM. Aside from this, we have super prayer renewal potions that can be purchased from the GE, replenishment potions that combine super restores and adrenaline potions, super restore potions that can boost your stats back up after using something like a Ceridomen brew, and grand potions that can be used if you have a low herb level. Grand potions can help boost your stats to near overload levels for cheap. These can also be used to boost your levels to enter some boss encounters. If you have the divination level for them, it's worth keeping a supply of signs importance on hand for bossing, as these will allow you to revive from death once. You can get the same perk from a defense cape. The last thing to mention is Weapon Poison++, plus plus, as this can give you a nice DPS boost on any boss that is not poison immune. I've already covered equipment in three other guides. If you haven't had a chance to see them yet, click the card in the top right hand corner of your screen. I left out the Enhanced Excalibur in those guides, so I just want to note that getting this unlocked as early as possible will be very beneficial to you. The final section of this video is on boss progression, and I want to say that this is a highly subjective topic. Where I place a boss might not be where someone else would, but I will try to share my reasoning behind these decisions. Now that we have that disclaimer out of the way, let's get started. In Tier 1 I have all of the entry bosses in RuneScape. This includes the Dagonoth Kings, the Giant Mole, the King Black Dragon, all of the Barrows Brothers, the Calphite Queen, and the Exiled Calphite Queen, along with the Chaos Elemental. All of these bosses can be killed with easily obtainable gear, and some of the more difficult ones can be killed in groups to make them as easy as the rest. Moving up a tier, we have all of the God Wars 1 bosses with the exception of Nex, and these will require various stats to be able to attempt. We also have the Corporal Beast, and you're going to want to attempt this when you have 75 or higher attack. You can do this in a larger group if you have lower stats, but you will need to complete the quest Summer's End. And finally, I put Beastmaster on this list partly because if you join those PVM communities that I talked about in the beginning of this video, you can get into a group of people that are way more geared than you that can carry you along for a kill. I typically do this once a week with people from YouTube or Twitch and help them get kills. It is very possible for a lower geared person to learn one of the roles at Beastmaster and have a higher chance of being accepted onto a group if they can perform that role and live through the raid. In tier 3 we have all of the God Wars 2 bosses, and these all have level requirements to be able to enter, but they can be boosted with those grand potions that I was talking about earlier. We also have Nex, Calphite King, Queen Black Dragon, and Rax. For each of these bosses, I've included some general recommendations for stats. That's not to say that you couldn't kill these bosses with lower stats than the ones that I've listed on screen. And on our last list, we have the Ascension bosses, which are on here not because they are difficult, but because they have a high 95 Slayer requirement to be able to be killed. Then we have the Magister, which is on this list also because it has a high Slayer requirement. We have Rots, Angel of Death, Telos, Beastmaster, Yakamaru, and Virago. With that said, I'd love to see where you would rank these bosses. Leave a comment below with your personal rankings for the bosses that I've included in this guide. That's it for this one. Until next time, talkie out.